In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, men, I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's great to be with each and every one of you. And as always, we like to start our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary is truly the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. We also, when we pray the Hail Holy Queen, that beautiful prayer that we pray at the end of the rosary, we invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's start off this day, which we dedicate to Mary. Every week, Saturday is Mary's day. Let's say the prayer that she loves most. That prayer is the, is the Hail Mary. So together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now I'd like to invite all of you to pray to our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is known as the Paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known as the Gift of Gifts. Holy Spirit is also the Sweet guest of the soul. Holy Spirit is also the counselor. Holy Spirit is also known as the consoler. Holy Spirit is, is also known as the interior master teacher. So let's uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come to be with us so we can get to know and love God more and more. That we will love God with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. As we pray, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your family and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, they shall be created. Thou shalt renew, renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, 
pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. Well, guys, angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So once again, we'd like to welcome you to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with all of you, and I promise I'll be praying for all of you, and I'd like to place you all in prayer, in the greatest of all prayers, and that prayer is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. See, there's no prayer whatsoever that can transcend in importance the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to place you on the altar and offer the following intentions. My first intention I'd like to pray for all of us that we would try to be open and docile to the workings of the Holy Spirit be open and docile to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Our sanctification depends upon docility and openness to the Holy Spirit. And we can pray this prayer. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Saying that prayer constantly, the Holy Spirit is, will descend upon you and give you a lot of light and give you peace. My second intention like to pray for your family members. So, I'd like to pray that all of our family members would, your children, your young adults, would be open to God. Open to God. That your family members that have been walking away from the church, that they would return, like the prodigal son. It's never too late. My third intention My third intention, I'd like to pray for the conversion and salvation of sinners. This very day people will be dying. Perhaps many of them are not prepared. Let's pray that Let's pray that they will open up their hearts to God's infinite mercy and be saved. The Gospel yesterday, Jesus said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul?
So those will be our prayer intentions. Today being Saturday is the day of Mary. So to honor Mary, I would like to just give you a brief recap of what happened last night, and then we'll enter into our gospel for today. Last night I was invited to give a, a talk in a nearby parish in Los Alamitos, the name of the parish is St. Hedwig's. The pastor there, a very good man, I was actually his spiritual director many years ago, spent in a year with the Oblates and ordained for the Diocese of Orange. His name is Father Quam Tran of Vietnamese origin. He invited me to go to his parish last night and to give a talk to his parishioners once a month to have a guest speaker come. And he asked me to give a talk on my new book and afterward or even before people could buy the book and I could sign it. He's a very interesting experience. Very interesting experience. And Valerie says she heard my talk, which was very funny. Yeah, I started off with three jokes. I'll sometimes start off with a joke or two. Get people laughing, get them in a good mood. As a public speaker, it's good to start off by getting the people in a good mood. Then, give the talk. And given that, given that the presentation of the book, there's so much in it, I was somewhat floundering to see what would be the best approach for these people. So I thought I'd start off by just giving them a biographical sketch of Mary in my life. And I'll just mention one note and invite all of you today, all of you today, to pray to Mary and to see the presence of Mary in your own life. And rewind the film of your life to see the different times in which Mary has come into your life. And one of the first things that I mentioned was that <coughs> I uh, I was the young one of the young the youngest priests in Southern California at the end of the month I'll be 17 and three quarters because I was born on leap year they got a kick out of that but then they said I was baptized on March 25th Now, March 25th happens to be one of the most important solemnities in the church year. It usually falls in Lent. And March 25th was my baptism day. That is the Annunciation, the first joyful mystery. The Annunciation when God sent the Archangel Gabriel to Mary, announcing to Mary that she would be the mother of God. 
Mary responded with her fiat, which she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to, the, to thy word. And then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. By Mary's yes, the second person of Trinity descended from the throne on high, entered into Mary. And if you count March 25th, December 25th, nine months later, nine months later, we celebrate the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I mentioned that, and I mentioned many other marrying moments, but then the fact that I chose to become an oblate of the Virgin Mary is also very providential. Oblate means an offering that we as oblates, we give ourselves. We give ourselves to God, but through the hands of Mary. And the founder of the Oblates, Venerable Father Bruno Lanteri, said that Mary is the foundress. Mary is the foundress of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. After my talk, I talked with the people, and many people bought my my Marian Companion and my some of my other books too. It was a wonderful meeting because I feel very strong about this. I really feel very strong about this, the importance of trying to spread knowledge, love, and devotion to Mary, and to get as many people, uh, as, many people as possible to be consecrated to Mary, and Mary will take us to Christ. Afterward, when I was signing books, a man came up and he said, well, what, what do you say, what do you say to, or to Protestants What do we say to Protestants? About Mary. And they told this man, and I don't talk to many Protestants, but what I would do is I would base my defense of the importance of Mary by relying upon relying upon scriptural texts relying upon sacred scripture and I quoted to the man two two of the passages where Mary speaks and when Mary speaks she's not trying to glorify herself but she's trying to glorify God and he mentioned two texts, Luke chapter 1 and John chapter 2. Luke chapter 1, I, I, I quoted for this gentleman, the Magnificat, in which Mary praises God. She proclaims the greatness of God. She starts off by saying, My soul does magnify the Lord. Another translation would be, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. So Mary, her life on earth, as well as in heaven, is to praise and glorify and magnify and worship God. Which is the purpose of all of us in principle and foundation. We are also called to praise and glorify and worship God. We're called to do the same. Then the second biblical verse I mentioned 
was taken from St. John chapter 2, verse 5. And it's actually the last time in the Bible that we hear Mary speaking. Which Mary says to the servants at the wedding feast of Cana, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm meeting the Protestants on their own turf. They rely upon Bible. We rely upon Bible as well as tradition. They rely upon Bible. So I'll, I'll meet them where they're at. And I'll just quote biblical verses and they accept the Bible. Why not accept what Mary says in the Bible? So my friends, on this day, Saturday, make sure that you pray the rosary well. So let's pray for Osa Amalia's mother in the hospital. We'll, we'll pray for her, that God would bless her and bless your family members, as we indeed are a family trying to support each other by our prayers and our presence. And given that this is Mary's day, let's ask Mary to go to the bedside of all people who are possibly in hospital, people that are suffering, people that are going through difficult times, as well as those who are watching over and attending the, the sick people of the world. Mary is very important in this also, very prominent in this too. So, try to honor Mary in a special way by praying the rosary and getting people to pray the rosary to, uh, to love Mary. So the reading for today, my friends, It's interesting how the church has worked out, the church, the liturgy works because we've been going through Genesis for a couple weeks. Now we've jumped back to Hebrews. We've gotten through about, um, gotten through several chapters of Hebrews, but we hadn't finished, so we jumped back to Hebrews today. And the basic theme of Hebrews today is the virtue of faith. In which, in Hebrews chapter 11, the Word of God presents the importance of faith such that the Word of God says, without faith we can't please God. We have to have faith to please God because faith points to the fact that we believe in God. If we don't believe in God, how are we going to respect God? So faith is indispensable for us to please God. In Hebrews, Hebrews, prevent, presents the faith of some of the key figures of the Old Testament, starting with Abel, Abel and his sacrifice that he offered to God. And then we have Noah. And then we have Enoch, who was walking and is taken by God to heaven. These are key figures of the Old Testament. And their faith, their faith in God. Then the, res the response to a real psalm is, I will praise your name forever, Lord. 
I will praise your name forever, Lord. Let's pray for those who are doing the spiritual exercises. Tomorrow we enter already into the third week. Time moves by quickly. Entering already into the, the third week of my 10-week program. Speaking about praise, I'll praise your name forever, Lord. We start off the principle, the spiritual exercises, by principle and foundation. In which St. Ignatius says that we are created to praise God. That's right. The purpose on earth is we are created to praise God. We are created to praise God. And by far, the most sublime, glorious, exalted means by which we can praise God is by attending Mass and by participating fully, actively, and consciously in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There is no more powerful prayer in the world than the holy sacrifice to the Mass. So let's praise the Lord when we go to Mass. And St. Ignatius says, be careful that the praise that we offer God with our lips is not contradicted by the way we live. There is there to be a harmony between the lips that praises God, but the life that supports what we're saying with our lips. Now, we move into the ninth chapter of St. Mark. which is a key chapter, a key passage in the life of Christ. Chapter 9 of Mark, the beginning, is the account of the transfiguration of Christ. the transfiguration of Christ, in which Jesus takes three of his friends, his best friends, Peter, James, and John, and he climbs the holy mountain with Peter, James, and John accompanying him. While on the mountain, our Lord has an experience which his clothes are transfigured and become as white as the snow. He's communicating with God the Father and also He's communicating with Moses and Elijah. Then the voice of the Father can be heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. The apostles tremble with fear. 
Peter says, it's good for us to be here, Lord. Let us build for you three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So there we have a, there we have a summary, a synopsis of the readings for today. The readings for today. So why don't we do this? We'll take the first reading and see how we can really connect the, the first reading of Hebrews with the transfiguration. In my style, my friends, I like in speaking about the Word of God, I like to summarize the passage in my own words. I like to give an interpretation. And then an application. So I give you the text, the interpretation, then I'd like to give you also the application. How can we apply the Word of God to our own lives? Pope Francis would say, go from the mind to the hearts to the feet. So let's start. Let's start with, with faith. Let's start with, with faith. I would start off on a very positive note, but also with humility and gratitude. You and the Perseverance family, you know, we come together every day, You are men and women of faith. So I think we should start off as we talk about faith being very humble and grateful to God being very humble and grateful to God for the fact that you have faith that I have faith. So let's uh, let's thank God. Let's thank God abundantly for the fact that we have faith. For example, going through tough times where a loved one is suffering, we ourselves go through some type of physical, moral, and emotional suffering. Things happen that don't seem to make any sense. Without faith, my friends, it's easy to give in to despair. And many people do give in to despair. They don't have faith and they don't have hope. Those two virtues are really interconnected, faith and hope. So let's thank God for our Perseverance family, for the fact that we have faith and we, we come together every day to try to strengthen each other's faith by praying together and by trying to get to learn, learn more and more about the riches of our, about the riches of our Catholic faith. So then, let's ask then, where, what is faith? There are many definitions that we can give about faith. But it might be defined as such.
it might be defined as such. It is a theological virtue that is infused in our soul in the moment of baptism that's the origin of it in which we believe in God and all that God teaches us because God can never be never can deceive or be deceived that might be a catechetical definition of faith But the origin of this faith is that it, it actually it comes from God. It's a faith is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. It's a gratuitous gift from God. It's a gratuitous gift from God. that we receive in the moment of our baptism. Earlier in the talk I was speaking about different Marian encounters, different Marian encounters. And I mentioned the fact that I'm very thankful for the fact that I was baptized on March 25th. I wonder if all of you know the day of your baptism. Do you know the day of your baptism? If not, you might even look into that today. Might even look into your baptism day today. Because in the day of your baptism, you receive many gifts. Among which was the gift of faith. So Maria just posted she was baptized on March 20th, 1960. So every day you should, every year you should be celebrating that. Even with your family members, your family members, you might celebrate two birthdays. Your physical birthday and your spiritual birthday. You might even read in conjunction with my talk John chapter 3 John chapter 3 Jesus speaks about two different types of birth Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus and you can find Nicodemus in the series with Jonathan Rumi chosen Jesus says to Nicodemus Unless you'll be born of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says, do I have to go back into the womb of my mother? And Jesus says to Nicodemus, you who are a master of the law don't understand this. What will happen if I talk about other things? Jesus says, unless you be born of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus is referring to, Jesus is referring to, is being born of the water and the Spirit is baptism. So, those who are just tuning in now, I'm commenting upon the first reading from Hebrews 
11, 1 to 7. And the basic theme is that the basic theme is that of faith. Is that a faith? So all of us, thanks be to God, thanks for our baptism, thanks for the ongoing formation, be, thanks be to God that we all have the gift of faith. The gift of faith. But remember these words. So we have Bev was baptized April 7, 2007. Marie, March 20th, 1960. Beatrice, which would be the 23rd of February 58. Sophie, Easter Vigil, 2019. So a lot of you actually know the, the date of your baptism. Most people, when they ask the question, they kind of, they, they stare at me as if I'm speaking a foreign language, no? But it's important that we know the date of our baptism. Martha, 1964. So we should be eternally grateful for, for the gift. It's a gift that God gave to us in our baptism. And that moment was infused into our soul, faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. Now, for this faith to grow, we have to walk with Jesus Peter, James, and John today in the gospel, we got to walk with them. We got to walk with them. And we see Jesus climbing. Jesus is climbing the, the holy mountain with Peter, James, and John. We're invited to climb. We're invited to climb the holy mountain with, with Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. In this sense, the young people have this saying, if you don't use it, you don't use it, then you lose it. You don't use it. If you don't use it, then you lose it. In other words, for our faith to grow, we have to keep exercising, we have to keep climbing with the Lord. Climbing the holy mountain. You know, you could you could just stand at the foot of the mountain, but you're never going to make it to the top. So it is with our our faith. We have to climb the mountain. We have to climb the mountain. That means we have to make an effort. We have to make an effort. If you just stand at the foot of the mountain, you're never going to make it. Or say, for example, you're in a you're in a a, a river where there are rapids. You have to you have to row. If you don't row, you're never going to get across. You're never going to cross the river or the lake unless you make an effort to 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 row. To row. So faith. Faith grows by exercising our faith. By climbing with the Lord. So I'd like to mention various ways in which we can we can grow in our faith. First thing I'd like to say is this. In the year 2000, 
the year 2000, a very holy priest died. I think he's already a servant of God. The name of this priest was Father John Hardin, who was a very holy Jesuit priest. Remember, after he died, there was an article in the National Catholic Register that said that he, he was a one-man spiritual army. <laughs> what a, what a compliment! A one-man spiritual army. What a, what a compliment! He basically did everything. He preached. He taught. He wrote. He gave retreats. He was a spiritual director, he was on TV, he was on radio, very holy man of God. And Father John Hardin made this comment with respect to faith. And he said that he noticed there's a common denominator for those who lose their faith. And he said this, those who lose their faith usually Those who lose their faith usually are those who end up by giving up prayer. Think about that. Those who lose their faith are usually those who give up prayer. Think about that. Those who lose their faith are those who end up by giving up prayer. Now, related to faith, the apostles are walking up the mountain side by side with Jesus Christ where he's eventually going to be transfigured and they're going to be looking at Christ transfigured in glory. That's a real experience in which the faith of the apostles was really bolstered. It was really fortified. It was strengthened. Now talking about faith and prayer. When you pray... When you pray well, many things are happening. Among which, when you're praying well, your faith is actually becoming strengthened. It's strengthened. Because when you pray, you're talking to a God that you do not see. And faith, going back to the definition, faith is believing without seeing. For that reason, we have the passage of going from a lack of faith to faith in the encounter between Jesus and St. Thomas the Apostle. You remember what happened. Jesus appeared to the Apostles, but Thomas was not there. And Thomas met the other Apostles who said, we, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas did not believe. Thomas did not have faith. He said, I won't believe. I will not believe until I see, in, until I place my hands in the hands and the feet and the side of Jesus. 
Then Jesus appears and he approaches Thomas and says, Come here, Thomas. Look at my hands. Look at my hand, feet. Thomas puts his hands in the side of Christ. Then Thomas goes from his lack of faith to his faith and his profession of faith. Thomas says one of the most beautiful acts of faith that we can say. He says, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And then Jesus says, you know the words, Thomas, blessed are those who believe without seeing. And that's what faith is. That's what faith is. Faith is believing, believing in a God that we don't see. Faith is believing in a God that do, we, don't, we don't see with our physical eyes, but we see with our interior eyes. So, if we really want to grow in our faith, we really want to grow in our faith, and all of us do, then we have to make a concerted effort in our lives, a concerted effort in our lives to grow deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper in our prayer life. That's right, growing deeper and deeper in our prayer life. By doing that, we will grow in our faith. In our faith. So faith is one of those virtues. Faith hope, and charity. Those are the three theological virtues. Faith, hope, and charity. They will all grow by exercising them. I don't know if you ever noticed, just on the human level, We do not exercise some talent. Then that talent becomes weak. Give you an example. Years ago, years ago, I was able to speak a pretty good and fluent Italian. I could baptize, I could preach, I could teach catechism in Italian. But I can no longer do that. For the simple reason that I haven't practiced speaking Italian for more than 35 years. If you don't use it, then you lose it. Now there might be trying to build muscles, trying to build muscles. You can build muscles by lifting weights. If you do the lifting of weights, reps, called reps means repetitions. You're doing reps. You do reps. Then you can start to build. 
muscles. But if you give up doing those reps, then the muscles that you once had can be turned into flab. The muscle tissues become fatty. So we, St. Ignatius speaks about spiritual exercises. By carrying out our spiritual exercises, then what happens is we, we start to fortify, strengthen, make more robust our spiritual muscles so that we can fight the good fight, run the good race, and receive the merited crown that God gives to his faithful followers. So my friends, let's pray for each other that with Peter, James, and John, and with Mary at our side, we can climb in our journey. We will grow in our faith so that when we die, we die that we'll go to heaven, there will no longer be any faith, be any faith because we will be able to contemplate God face to face in what is called the beatific vision. So let's pray for each other that we will truly grow in our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.